Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Wow You Wait. I am so glad that you are tuning in to talk a little bit about The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Now, you... There are over 400 requests on this book currently. So, what I want to do is give you guys some books, some movies, some recommendations from the author herself for, for items to check out while you wait. Because you're going to be waiting. <laughs> Number 400, my heart goes out to you. And I really hope you enjoy that 2022 reading. <laughs> Breaks my heart. But what it really shows is that Ann Arbor has a voracious population of readers who are looking to read interesting fiction. So if anything, that's really cool. Um, I also wanted to show off something new and different about me. I don't know if you guys know what it is. Do you? Because it's my glasses. But what I'm going to have to do is take off my glasses because of this glare. Which breaks my heart. So I'm just going to have to do it this way. So, The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett is an incredible novel about a community in Louisiana called Mallard. Now, everybody who lives in Mallard, uh, it's a community of African Americans who are all very, very fair-skinned. And it, I was like, is there any historical precedence for this? In researching a little bit about, the, uh, about doing research for this video, um, Britt Bennett mentioned that her mother, who's from the South, grew uh grew up there was like this myth or legend of a town just like mallard where it was a town of black people who could all pass as white um so there's a little tidbit for you anyways two sisters the 1950s two sisters are growing up in mallard um both very very fair skinned just like everybody else in the, in the town right and um they actually actually witnessed the lynching of their father that's not a spoiler so they decide, you know, this, we need to do something. So they move to New Orleans without telling anybody. Um, and in New Orleans, one of the sisters decides to live her life as a white woman. She marries her boss without telling her, um, her sister and disappears to start her new life. So her sister, who is left, no, I don't want to say left behind, her sister who remains in um, New Orleans, she marries and has a child. Her child is not fair-skinned. Her child is deeply melanated. So she breaks up with her husband, She and she moves back to Mallard. Her child is bullied, prejudiced, all this stuff. All the while... The daughter or the sister who moved away and, and is living her life as a white woman also has a daughter. And when the daughter from Mallard with a beautiful dark skin moves to Los Angeles for college, there's some run-ins, right? And there's some connections or aren't there connections? Girl, no spoilers. There's also a big, nice, heaping scoop of queer issues in the book. There's a trans man character, and I appreciate any sort of representation. Not any sort of representation. I, I appreciate good representation, healthy, complex representation of trans men. And we got a trans man character in this, trans man character in this book. Love, 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 love every second of this book. So, I want to give you guys, like I said before, some um, movies to check out, some books to check out while you wait. Um, and I have some personal recommendations for you. So, um, my first book that I recommend you check out as you wait to receive your copy of The Vanishing Half is called The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Now, this is a young adult book, and it is my belief that young adult fiction... That's the jam, man. Young adult authors get to the truth of life so much faster and in and, 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 and such a more um, rewarding, entertaining way than uh, adults, people who write adult fiction. Um, and this book is about, um, her name is Star. Star lives in a lower socioeconomic um, setting. Uh, <clears throat> 
and she attends a primarily white school, Star is Black, she attends a primarily white school. Um, it's like a private school, fancy school. So she's got a lot of, um, she's reckoning with her identity, right? Because at school, she might put on certain airs. Um, she might adopt certain parts of whiteness in order to um, exist in that space that uh, she's living a dual life, right? So what I love about this book is that it is the book I would put into anybody's hands who say that racism does not exist in America. Because what this book does is it, it explains racism um, through, through the lens of a young person and, and it explains why one might protest um, during this, you know, during this time in America. Um, it's also a book about uh, finding your family and your family might not be all your blood relatives. It might be a aunt's cousin. It might be this, that, or the other. But finding that space, finding family and creating that for yourself. Um, that's a big part of this book that I really loved. And that's that's something that the characters of, of The Vanishing have to do as well. So check that book out. Another book that I would suggest that you guys take a look at, it's called I Can't Date Jesus by Michael Arsenault. Now, this is a collection of essays that deal with the author's um, Southern identity, uh, growing up in Houston. Um, it deals with... Um, his religious background, his family, uh, as he comes to terms with his identity as a gay black man. Um, one of the reasons I love this book so much is because uh, his writing style. He is funny. There is a laugh a minute. And if you are my age, which just guess, or a little bit older, the references he makes um will warm your heart. He refers to the LGBTQ community as the LGB, LGBT SWV community, which just makes me laugh. He's also a huge Beyonce fan. There's a wonderful essay about Beyonce and the role that um, female musicians play in into um, how gay people form their identities. That was just incredible. So there's a lot of overlap between that book. Um, not a lot of overlap. There are definitely some connections between The Vanishing Half as well as I Can't Date Jesus by Michael Arsenault. So give that a look as well. I'm also going to give a, ven a very general shout out to the novels of Toni Morrison and Alice Walker. Toni Morrison um, specifically, if you read anything about Britt Bennett, the people who write about books are just like, Toni Morrison, she's Toni Morrison, she's Toni Morrison which is great. It just seems like a lot to live up to um, for Miss Bennett. Anyways, check out, I would say The Bluest Eye is worth taking a look at. There's a lot of themes that are um, that resonate um, from The Bluest Eye to The Vanishing Half. I also want you to check out um, God Bless the Child by Toni Morrison because that book deals directly with colorism. Um, so that's an... It, 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 also resonates with the vanishing half and whatever you do just get a copy of the color purple into your hands and read it it's a book about sisters it's a book about redemption it's a book about racism it's a book about female identity just just read the color purple or get the movie no get the book and get the movie yeah the movie's incredible wow but any Alice Walker book, any Tony, any Toni Morrison book, get into it. Now I want to talk a little bit about um, movies and TV that you can get from Ann Arbor District Library that you might want to watch while you wait for The Vanishing Half, right? My first suggestion is The People vs. O.J. Simpson, which is like a fictionalized miniseries about um, the O.J. Simpson trial, right? It is endlessly fascinating. Endlessly fascinating. There's a reason why it is the trial of the century. It it, it, it has to deal with a race in America. It has to deal with how we perceive um, heroes. It's about how we perceive celebrity. Um, it's um, O.J. Simpson himself, the man who, you know, literally said on the record, I'm not black, I'm O.J. But the reason... Oh, 
the, perhaps the largest reason that um, I suggest this this uh, mini series in relation to the vanishing half is because um, parts of the book and the parts of the mini series takes place in the Brentwood neighborhood of Los Angeles. So this is like the fancy rich people, like super elite neighborhood, and um, in Los Angeles, and th those two pieces of of of, of um, media share that setting and it's just delicious reading the vanishing half will inform you about um brentwood in in relation to the people versus oj and vice versa and it's just endlessly fascinating also you gotta watch the people versus oj because um selma blair plays chris Kardashian. chris kardashian um um uh what's his name from friends um, David Schwimmer plays Robert Kardashian. John Travolta is in it. <laughs> bless. John Travolta, bless. Um, and Sarah Paulson as Marsha Cross in that Marsha Cro in that Marsha Cross wig. Are you kidding me? It is entertainment at its finest, and it will um, prepare you to wrestle with certain themes presented in in the Vanishing Half. I also want to suggest to you, Paris is burning. This is a documentary from, I think it's from 1990. And what it um, is about uh, the ballroom scene in, in New York during that time. When I say ballroom scene, I'm gonna try to give you like the abridged version of what I'm talking about. If you ever seen the TV show Pose, that's the ballroom scene, that's what I'm talking about. So back in the day, racial minorities, um, racial minorities who were also a part of the LGBTQ community basically would get together and put on a show. They would put on beautiful outfits, get into certain, get into the gig um, as means to kind of participate in um, of the rich whitey white, you know, um, and allow them to, they existed in a fantasy world, right? In a world in which they are constantly being told they are not enough, that they are ugly, that they are not worth it. They said, well, me and my friends, me and my family, me and my chosen family are all about to um, get into outfits that we stole from Nordstrom's to look like characters from Dynasty. And through that very narrow fantasy world, because it is fantasy, but it's not fantasy. They brought their fantasy to fruition. Um, they would walk the runway and compete with other houses, other families, um, to see who could, who could, who's, who is giving the most dynasty realness? Who is giving you Dallas realness? And there's all sorts of categories, right? Who is giving you, who is giving, the, who's the most feminine passing? Um, who can pass as the most masculine? Get up in some army outfit and burn the runway. I did a really terrible job of explaining this movie, which it is only my hope that me rambling will make you request the movie and find out exactly what I'm talking about. Anyways, trans representation in film come through. One of the main reasons to watch this. It's also so heartwarming and vibrant and colorful. Oh my gosh. So for all those reasons, check out Paris is Burning. Now I want to get into some suggestions from the author herself. Um, these are books that Britt Bennett, I've uh, reading interviews, watching YouTube clips that she suggests for her readers. Um, now this next book is what she defines as the book she wishes everyone would read. This is called A Home at the End of the World by Michael Cunningham. Now I first read this book in high school and it is Ooh, it sticks with you. It sticks to your ribs, right? It's about these two boys. I think they're growing up in the 60s or 70s. I want to say 60s because the mom is like hippie, like pot smoking, like listening to music. And but maybe I'm wrong. I should just look it up because, you know, I'm making a video about it. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to guess. <laughs> so it's like the 60s. These two boys are, are besties, right? But sometimes you like want to kiss your bestie. And like, sometimes they're like, oh, let's kiss. Sometimes let's not kiss. Anyways, they grow up, right? And um, one of the boys moves to New York City where he moves in with um, his female best friend. And then something happens, no spoilers, something happens and his friend from his childhood who is straight 
ish moves in to uh, his apartment with him and his female bestie. Then some shenanigans, um, some circus type behavior occurs and that's the premise of the book but i cannot tell you because it would spoil the book anyways michael cunningham is the same guy who wrote um the hours so if you're into the hours you'll definitely be into this book um and it's just it's a family it's it's it's, it's a heartwarming story about finding family i'm gonna say that so many times in this video but i think that's one you know that's the thorough that's the thread that 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 kind of binds all the things that i'm talking about so at the risk of being redundant, right? So check out A Home at the End of the World by Michael Cunningham. Now, Brett Bennett also suggests um, that her readers read The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. This is the book, when I talk about rugs being pulled out from under you, this is that book. So the premise of this book, it is what you perceive to be a slave narrative at the time, and it is a slave narrative, um, there's a twist right the underground railroad is a literal thing in this book there is a there is a train underground that you get on that takes you to freedom which reminds me of <laughs> real housemates of atlanta if you're a fan you all remember that scene with portia anyways um and that's the premise of the book so what it allows what the train itself functions as a like a like a a cog in the narrative machine, right? And what Colson Whitehead does, he takes you through the, the historical experience of being Black in America. Um, no spoilers! I'm gonna shut my mouth. But I think you should check this book out. Britt Bennett says you should check this book out. Um, and it's definitely, it will definitely be an, en an enriching reading experience as you wait for The Vanishing Half. Now, um, I want to thank you guys for tuning in, um, and I hope that you find these suggestions to be meaningful to you. Um, the Vanishing Half, and although there's 400 people waiting for it, is worth the wait. Stay on that um, waiting list, y'all. Um, and it, it is our hope that we'll get those books in your hands as soon as possible. Um, I'm very excited about our next, uh, the next book that I'll be talking about um, in the future. This is Cast. Am I saying it right? Cast. C-A-S-T-E. It's a cast system. Is it a cased system? It's a cast system. Cast. I'm going to go ahead and say it's called Cast. And if it's not called Cast, just comment below and tell me that I'm saying something wrong. If I did all the wrong things I said in this video, comment about it below. Okay? Um, it's called Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. This is a nonfiction book. And what is the dang... Um, it's called the uh, Cast, The Origins of Our Discontents. Whoo! It is a, a nonfiction book. I'm not a nonfiction reader. It's like historical nonfiction, right? Um, so I'm eager to dive into something new. I'm going to give this book a look. Give this book a look. And then I am going to um, suggest some, some um, other items for you to check out while you wait to receive it. As there are also over 400 requests on this book at this time. I love it. Y'all are some readers. And you're, you're willing to, to wait. We love it. We, we love a patient. We love patience. Patience is a virtue. So yes, keep, a, keep an eye out for our next video about cast by Isabel Wilkerson. And at this time, I'm just going to very politely and gently and um, just very politely, respectfully suggest that you go ahead and like this video. Go ahead and like this video. Smash the like. Smash subscribe. Smash the subscribe button below. Ring that bell. It's the holiday season. Are you ready to jingle your bells? Go ahead and jingle our bell below. Subscribe to AADLT.TV so you get all the juicy content, all the crafting content, all the Black Lives Matter discussion series content. Get all this content from us that we are producing for you during this time, the pandemic time, the trying times. So comment below, like, subscribe, share, not share, share. <laughs> I'm an Oscar winner. Um, share, S-H-A-R-E. 
And yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in once again.